What's going on everyone? The market was a chop fest today as only about 55% of stocks in the S&P 500 closed in the green. Some stocks went up, some stocks fell, and a lot of stocks just did nothing. As we've been saying so much over the past couple of weeks especially, you have to follow the money. Uh, since the beginning of the year, AI stocks, chip stocks, and cryptocurrency stocks have been the stars of the show, but just due to the way the market is, is um, you can't have the same industries be hot forever. Uh, there's always like ebbs and flows to the market in uh, certain industries, um, you know, start to gain momentum. And more recently, gold and weed has been all you need in the market. And more specifically, uh, gold has just been on a crazy uptrend. But, e you know, even like I said, the uh, marijuana industry has been seeing some pretty strong inflows as well. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about where the money is flowing right now, some important Important things to know for tomorrow and at the end of today's video we have a monster big money trade worth over 10 million dollars so stick with us until the end and Tom let's get right into it man Mike I'll take some golden weed any day especially in the market <laughs> when we're seeing this type of movement like till raise up 18 percent Mike, CGC went up 30% again today. How many times over the past few weeks has CGC went up 30%? Like, if we go to the daily chart, we are seeing some insane green candles on this stock. And, uh, you know, green's fitting for a marijuana stock like this. So hopefully it keeps going up. It broke above $10 today, which I thought was a pretty stiff resistance. Once we got through there, that was a pretty good breakout. So good to see there, Mike. The marijuana stocks are blasting off. And I'm sure people are sick and tired of hearing about gold gold by now, but I'm not because it keeps flying up, right? These are some great moves. Gold continues to push higher. Uh, it's one of the biggest I would say commodities in the world, if not the biggest, right? I mean, oil is probably pretty close, but uh, looking at gold, it's up. It's really uptrending right now, hitting new highs, and we're just seeing continuous pressure on those all-time highs, which is great, Mike. And uh, whenever we see, talk about gold and marijuana, there is some pretty big news, like central banks buying up gold, and it looks like on the marijuana side of things, Florida is actually going to be voting on marijuana soon. Yeah, and uh, these MJ stocks just love that news. So tell us more about what's actually going on here. Yeah, apparently in November, Florida's going to get to vote to legalize marijuana in that state. Apparently their attorney general was actually trying to block the ballot measure because she didn't understand that people would maybe get confused about it still being federally illegal. But at the same time, so many other states have already done this. I mean, you know, I think there's a pretty good precedent set there for it. So we'll see what happens. But I'm glad that the Florida Supreme Court actually ruled against the attorney general who was trying to block this. Like I said, I mean, I can't tell why she's really trying to block it. I don't know if that was her main reason or not. But at the end of the day, the MJ stocks love this news. And there's just been so much good news surrounding marijuana lately. So that's why we're seeing CGC up 30% MSOS up as much as it is. Yeah, and like you said, there have been other news lately with Germany Germany legalizing as well as of a couple days ago. So the industry's been booming, and when it comes to this industry, it's all a game of momentum because these stocks move in uh, crazier ways than ever any other area in the market. More specifically, check out stocks like CGC, TLRY, MSOS, ACB. Like there are a bunch of different stocks in this industry. And when they start moving, they tend to move in some pretty powerful ways as we've seen over like the past couple of weeks. I remember when we first really started talking about uh, these weed stocks, more specifically CGC on uh, March 18th, right? It was that Monday. Uh, it was the video for that and they've been going crazy ever since again there's, it's all a game of momentum so for as long as there's positive sentiment and news and hype in this industry these stocks move in some insane ways and ride the momentum like if the stock starts to pull back then uh you know stick to your plan like in my opinion i've said this before and i'll say it again there are two main ways to play these types of stocks you can either scalp it on a daily basis so when you see cgc have a giant up move just like it did today then you know feel free to scalp that all day long or if you don't want to do that then just make a decision on whether or not you are willing to swing this like swing this industry for the next couple weeks and if you are let it do its thing. And if you're not, then uh, just try not to get FOMO. But the worst thing you want to do is be hesitant, right? Like make a logical decision now and then just stick to your plan. That's the best way to go, especially in a unique situation like this. 
Yeah, it's very unique to see these stocks moving like this. And whenever we've seen CGC move in the past, like some of these bigger uptrends on this stock have been well over like 300% going back to the move like during 2020. And this isn't even the largest one it ever had. It almost hit 300%. Ever since we started talking about it, Mike, it's up like 190 plus percent from March 18th. And from the low down here, it's actually up even more. So we're seeing these stocks go up in a crazy way. I would say for tomorrow, Mike, I'm really watching $11.20 and I even have CGC on the book map here because I noticed that $12 there was a bit of sellers stacked up there so just keep that on the radar for the next couple days sounds good and then we can't forget about what's going on with gold either I bet our viewers are starting to get a little bit annoyed with this one but I know a lot <laughs> of them have done very well with this so we'll keep on talking about it but yeah gold prices keep on uh, setting new record highs uh, GLD GDX GOLD and even silver with SLV just keep on marching higher I love to see it and I love seeing all these uh, updates on these positions with a lot of the viewers I know a lot of them have just been crushing it so we can't forget about this either and uh gold while it's not as crazy as like let's say the marijuana industry it still does have some very nice moves as we've seen over the past couple weeks it's just uh slower moving yeah, it really is. And a lot of these big money plays like on GDX, GOLD are well over like 150% at this point. So to see these stocks moving the way that they are, uh, like the options definitely have good moves. Like I know it's not going to be up like maybe, you know, we're seeing CGC go up 200% in a couple weeks, right? Those options are going berserk. But GDX will still have pretty good moves out there. Like I'm sure a lot of people would be really happy with like a couple hundred percent over the past couple weeks. So keep your eyes on gold. Mike and there was even some big news with gold lately that we've talked about in a couple other videos about central banks continuing to buy gold up and Mike looks like uh, this charts a really good visualization of that you can see how like I'm not going to say like it was stagnant, but you know, central bank gold buying just wasn't the highest. And over the past couple to a few years, it has been blasting to the upside, which uh, that that's a pretty big telltale sign. Like I've heard China and a bunch of other big countries are buying some. Yeah. And you can't blame them either. You know, when we have inflation the way it is, and then we have the giant geopolitical risks like we have in the world right now, um, it's not a bad move to be buying gold, right? Like if China invades Taiwan, gold, you know, like is a nice safe haven <laughs> asset, you know, all the tensions rising in the Middle East, you know, people want protection. And at the same time, the stock market has ran up so much where it makes people like it makes it a lot easier to, you know, de-risk a little bit. So yeah, I mean, I really can't blame people. And I think like the price action just over the past couple of weeks have been very telling on where the money is flowing and the precious metals have been uh, gaining quite a bit. Um, if you have missed out on this run so far, um, you know, you can still scalp the like day to day moves, but if you're looking for like more of like a medium to longer term play, there should be a dip pretty soon. So, you know, keep, you know, keep that in mind, be ready to, uh, um, strike on it if you do see an opportunity. But one other thing I want to touch on before we go to the next topic is to check out SLV. While gold gets all the love, hype, and attention, um, SLV, which is silver, also has some really big moves, and sometimes it moves even crazier than gold. The only thing is that silver isn't at record highs just yet, but it is getting to like a two year highs, which is a good sign. And, you know, at the end of the day, gold and silver generally speaking, move together. Yeah, they do. Like silver's not at all time highs. You know, it didn't have maybe quite as good of moves as gold over the past couple of years, but a Silver is actually a lot lower in price, and sometimes the moves can be a little bit more parabolic even. Uh, as we see, it's up 3.73% today with SLV. Where we go to GLD, it was only up 0.88%. So keep that in mind. There will be larger moves there, even though they, you know, maybe not might be like as consistent or et cetera. But I know a lot of people are looking at silver, Mike, as it's used in all of like the electronics throughout the world and everything like that too. So definitely don't forget about it and check out that big money play from yesterday on SLV too. It's pretty interesting. Yeah, we can't forget about that. We we literally talked about a $1.3 million trade on SLV to the upside in yesterday's video. So yeah, don't <laughs> forget about that. Uh, but Tom, we also can't forget about uh, what the big man had to say today. Jerome Powell spoke and the market didn't move too much, but uh, what do we have to know? 
Yeah, it really didn't. And just to kind of give some context on the market movement today, that big move at open or just after open there was actually from the ISM services PMI that came out this morning. It caused some upwards volatility. Then the spy started hitting a pretty major resistance and falling back down. And while it was bouncing around up here at that resistance, Jerome Powell is actually talking at a Stanford event. And while he was speaking, he emphasized that they are going to need more evidence that inflation is falling before they start cutting rates. Now, of course, a lot of you guys out there are probably just angry with what I just said because you're probably like, Tom, every time Powell talks, that's what he says. And it's true <laughs> because he's like leading us all down a, a path. And we got to keep in mind that this guy is the same one that gave us transitory a couple years ago. So, you know, they might be trying to play us a little bit. So keep that in mind. Uh, I am watching the FedWatch tool, Mike, and I noticed the percentage is still pretty high for a cut in June. So it's not like it dropped too much at all. Yeah, that's a good point. So for those of you who've been in the market for a couple of years now, like Tom mentioned, uh, before inflation got super crazy, Jerome Powell and the Fed was just like, oh, it's transitory, it's transitory, it's transitory. Like, you know, basically saying like, don't worry about it. And then the next thing you know, inflation shot up like crazy. And uh, essentially what we're having here with interest rates is Jerome Powell and the Fed, uh, at least they were expected to cut rates by like five times at least for this year. And now, now it's getting down to like, all right, maybe they'll cut four times. Maybe they'll cut three times. Maybe they'll cut two times. Maybe they might not even cut at all. Right. So it's like, they're kind of slow playing everyone. And like Tom said, like they're expected for right now to cut rates on June uh, 12th, but like that's not guaranteed. And you know, if things keep trending the way they have been, like maybe we won't see a cut, but Jerome Powell's definitely, uh, I don't know. He's not too eager to cut. And I don't, I don't necessarily blame him either. Yeah, I don't either. Like it's, I know that it seems like the market right now is doing so well. And I would think that they would want to see like more pressure on the markets, on the overall economy right now before they truly start cutting. Like we need that inflation number to start really truly falling. And we're going to get at least one more reading before that next FOMC meeting. So that'll be pretty big. I, I think that'll be a big telltale sign is uh, at least before the June meeting, if we see inflation truly like falling under 3%, then I think they might start to, you know, talk about it a little bit more but for right now i mean if it stays above three percent we have to watch out especially with how the spy has been getting a little weak lately along with some of these tech stocks like poor apple here almost started selling back off end of day again oh boy all right tom well, let's get into the fun stuff for today which are some setups for tomorrow a stock i'm watching very closely is cgc and it's to the upside this is the marijuana stock it has a lot of momentum it's up 30 percent on the day there's a lot of volume surging in and there's a lot of attention with the industry right now um for as long as it keeps constant pressure on the high of day i like it to the upside if we see the stock start to reverse or start to gap down or anything like that, then there's no reason to try and force a setup to the upside. The opportunity is when we have like that, like parabolic uh, price action, just like Tom circled on the chart. Like you want to see that constant pressure on that high of day and the stock surging to the upside, because that's when you have that snowball effect of buying come in. But when it's just consolidating and lollygagging around, then there's not really much opportunity there. So again, I'm watching CGC to the upside, but we have to see good price action. Yeah, and that was some great price action that came in around the end of day today. Like, heading into Power Hour, it was amazing out there for CGC and the MJ stock. So, let's go. Let's see them continue up tomorrow. Uh, with my next stock, or my first stock, I should say, I'm looking at Enphase. I'm going to look for it to break above 119 tomorrow. It had a really good day, closed up 4.45%. And whenever you zoom out on, like, an Enphase daily chart, they're actually pretty low right now. And they're even following kind of a short-term trend. So, I'm going to look for that continuation up. And again, like Mike said, you've got to see that pressure on the high of day. And like I said, that break of 119. Sounds good. Another stock I'm watching pretty closely is UVXY and it's the upside. This one also has a uh, condition to it. So um, basically when the market's panicking and falling and everyone's freaking out, um, a lot of things happen, of course, but UVXY tends to rip to the upside because fear and volatility increase. If we do see a sell-off tomorrow, I'm definitely going to look at UVXY to the upside. When it moves with good momentum, it has some great moves. It is for short-term trading only. Don't hold this over time. But like ideally, I just want to see like uh, the SPY falling in like a decent way. And like a good way to like uh, get an idea if we are seeing like 
good panic or not is if spy can get back below that like 516 dollar and 50 cent area if we get back below the low from tuesday uh there's a good chance that the market is weakening quite a bit so basically if spy breaks below 516.50 and the price action's decent i'll definitely look at uvxy to the upside yeah, I like that quite a bit, Mike. And the SPY, I thought was actually pretty weak today. I know it popped up at first, but it actually ran into a pretty big resistance around like 520, 521, bouncing off a pretty big trend line from the past couple of days. That's been pretty consistent too. So I li actually like the SPY down for tomorrow, especially if it breaks like 51650. That would be really fun for UVXY. Uh, with my next play, I'm looking at Ford, and who could have guessed, right? I've talked about Ford a lot over the past couple weeks. They actually had some good news with their delivery numbers today, unlike Tesla a couple days ago. So uh kind of shows that sometimes those, I guess... That like the car companies that are more established, not like the growth car companies are doing a little bit better out there. But uh, with Ford, I'm going to look for that continuation tomorrow up above 1370. If I see a break, I will look for it up. The daily chart's pretty strong right now, and it's seeing a lot of good pressure to the upside. So let's see it, Mike. I mean, there's a lot of good stocks that are starting to blast off here in the short term, and a lot of them have been actually down in the dumps a lot lately. So it's good to see him kind of coming back up here. Yeah, and I saw some good uh, bookmap price action with that one too. Yeah, bookmap's pretty fire on Ford. So I did want to mention this. If we do see a breakout tomorrow up above like 1375, 1380, we do have to be a little careful of the $14 resistance coming up. That is pretty big. There were some shares stacked up there today, as you can see at the top of the bookmap chart here. And as we scroll out, $15 has even more with 226,000 shares stack there but i'm not sure we'll get the 15 tomorrow mike that would be a pretty crazy run all right all right well let's get right into the momentum plays for tomorrow tom you already know what the first one is we have slv to the upside <laughs> yeah I, at first i was like i don't know if it's an mj stock or a, or a metal <laughs> stock but uh looking here go ahead and make slv break out above 24.90 if they break it in pre-market then watch 25 dollars. It, it'll probably have some pretty good pre-market action all right, with the next one, we have Coinbase to the downside. C-O-I-N, yeah, 2.3%. Pretty good intraday support here, right around 249. So if we break under that, then I up puts just under 250. All right, and then with the last one, we have Meta for both directions. Yeah, Meta actually had a great day, up 1.8%. I'm not going to say it was the best day ever, but pretty good. Uh, if it can break 509, then go ahead and look at calls. But if it ends up falling back under 502, then I up puts. Sounds good. So we have the downside level for puts and we have the upside level for calls. That's for Meta. Don't forget about the downside level for Coinbase and then the upside level for Silver or SLV. These three stocks are on watch for, for potential day trades tomorrow if and only if they break through the levels Tom listed. We want to see breakthroughs in the desired direction and then continuations in that direction. We're looking for strong, powerful, and consistent movement for these potential day trades. But Tom, I think it's now about that time for today's monster $10 million big money trade of the day. And we are looking at ticker symbol FXI. So today the big money placed a pretty big bullish trade on FXI where they bought the 25 strike call options and they shorted the 30 strike call options. This technically will sound a little bit advanced, but just bear with me for one second. Uh, basically, they bought a call debit spread. Bought the 25 strike calls, shorted the 30 strike calls. Uh, both of these expire on August 16th of 2024. The main thing you need to know is that the big money is betting this stock will go up. The more it goes up, the more they'll make. Um... Basically, if you want to make your life nice and easy and you don't want to trade a call debit spread, you can just follow the FXI 25 strike calls for August 16th of 2024, and you'll be trading basically the same setup here. So keep that in mind. Uh, FXI is an ETF that follows a bunch of Chinese stocks. These stocks have been getting pummeled over the past couple of years, and they are now to the point where they are so low that people are starting to buy into them. And this has kind of shifted the 
overall like risk reward with this trade of course given it does follow Chinese stocks it naturally has some unique risks so if China invades Taiwan or does something else crazy like that then obviously that is a risk but um, you know there's risk with everything and uh, looking at the setup overall I think it looks pretty tempting and I'm pretty excited to see how this one does Tom we've been seeing a boatload of uh, big money trades on FXI lately Oh my gosh, I've been trying to manage them on the chart, Mike. There's like not enough room, but there's been a lot of them over the past like few months. And just to see the, I would say the Chinese government continuing to do what they're doing, trying to prop up their markets and et cetera. I think that's going to help these China stocks here. I know that it hasn't been helping at first. Like we're still seeing like Baba, JD, and a lot of them, you know, staying fairly low in the grand scheme of things. But I do think that they could end up breaking out here. It might just take a couple more months. And, you know, the big thing with this is just to really like give it the time it needs. You know, this is this goes all the way out to August. So you got to keep that in mind too. It's not going to be a play that goes up tomorrow. But then again, in the short term, I'm looking for a break above like that $25 area. If we break that, I think there could be some good action, you know, for the next uh, couple weeks or, or whenever we do break that, right? Uh, you know, obviously, I don't mean like right now for the next couple weeks. Once it breaks, then a couple weeks. Gotcha. So, you know, obviously, it's a unique setup, unique situation. But kind of like you said, you just have to give it the time it needs. This is not something that is necessarily expected to go up tomorrow. It expires all the way out in the middle of August. It it has time. What I do like is that while the Chinese stocks haven't been ripping to the upside lately, they have been trending up. Like FXI uh, bottomed out on uh, like towards the end of January this year, and it's just been like stair stepping higher ever since. So keep a close eye on this one. And uh, for those of you who are in the short term trading, you have to check out the stocked up trading floor. Um, you get full access to all the big money trades that we talk about on a daily basis. Um, a lot of them have just been going below ballistic lately, uh, especially like one uh, with SLCA from, I think it was two weeks ago at this point. It was SLCA 12 strike calls for um, April 19th and SLCA popped up by like 8% today and the uh, call options are up over 100% from when we talked about them. And this is just one trade. We I think the best one over like the past uh, couple of weeks and months was with BZ, the 15 strike calls that popped up by 525%. So Get in on the action. Uh, you also get access to our uh, army of trading bots. You can chat with Tom and myself all day long. If you're into short-term trading, it is the place to be. And uh, we very rarely do sales. So uh, strike on the deal while, uh, while it's here. Use coupon code BIGMONEY to uh, save big with the yearly plan. It's the place to be, like I said. And Tom, while we're in the Discord, let's give a giant shout out to today's member of the day, Dwayne, who used one of the uh, bots in the trading floor and uh, did great with some MU call options. It looks like he uh, made this play in 10 minutes. So awesome job, Dwayne, and keep up the great work. But Tom, we have two more days left in the trading week. The market's kind of lollygagging around, but we've seen some awesome movement out of individual areas in the market, like gold, silver, weed stocks, and you know even a few tech stocks. So let's make the uh, rest of the week a good one. Yeah, let's do it, Mike. There's been a lot of great stocks running around over the past couple weeks. I know the SPY has been slow. Like we switched to SPY. It had a good move up and good move back down, but overall it didn't really move too much. Follow where the money's flowing. CGC, the gold stocks, silver. We're seeing great movement there. Even the oil stocks. I know they didn't necessarily run up today, but if they start breaking out again tomorrow, definitely keep your eyes on those as well. Have a lot of good uh, momentum plays for tonight, like Ford and CGC. So let's go, Mike. It's been a great past couple weeks. We've been seeing some great movement. And guys, just make the next two days count. It's going to be pretty fun. On the economic side of things, there is non-farm payrolls and the unemployment rate Friday. But before tomorrow, there's nothing really on the radar. And then, of course, there's nothing with earnings either, right? <laughs> yeah, nothing there. I, I didn't even want to say it today, but uh, yesterday I switched off to it in a record time. Seriously. All right. And then last but not least, if you're new to the channel, consider demolishing that subscribe button. If you do, you'll get our videos recommended to you more often. Every single day we post about uh, the most important stocks, some important things to know, multi-million dollar big money plays and just everything you need to know about the market in 20 to 25 minutes or less. And then again, don't forget coupon code big money to save big with the yearly plan. And besides that, let's make the rest of the week count. Thanks for watching.